Welcome to the voice of one crying in the wilderness. This ministry uh, is founded on Mark 1, 3, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. After seeking the Lord in prayer, our name was given to us by the Lord. We invite you to like us on Facebook, The Voice Crying in the Wilderness, where you can download all of our messages, or you may email us at avoc2019 at gmail.com. And that's still a voice of one crying. And you can send a request there for a message to be emailed to you. You must know your speaker's name, day, and date. And before I um, let everybody know our speaker for this evening, I want everyone, if they could just, after, you know, um, just before I give our closing, there's going to be an announcement, a very urgent announcement about a ministry so we could stay on just to hear that announcement we'd appreciate it and our speaker for this evening is brother anthony james and his ministry is the lord's will ministry good evening brother james and at this time we're going to turn everything over to brother james for our opening prayer and our evening message Saints, once again, we have come unto a goodly stock. That for which is the common work, that for which we have been drafted in, and by the grace of God, he has brought us, who are originally Gentiles, to a goodly line, that we can be called the Israel of God. Truly, saints, we are blessed. At this time, we're going to look at part two of the presentation from yesterday, the wise and foolish virgin. Before we go further, we want to have three particulars, a Bible, a a prayerful heart, and a receptance of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Once again, the Bible, a prayerful heart, and a receptance of the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. At this time, let us get in prayer. Father, you are so wonderful in all you do. You are so wonderful because you have brought us once again before your audience chamber that we can receive of the golden oil from your two witnesses, the Old and the New Testament. We want to thank you, Father, for your two anointed ones that you have given for the recreation of your people, the sanctification of those who accept that truth, for thy word is truly true. Bring to us our minds clarity, illuminate, Enlighten and demonstrate that for which your words that proceeded from your mouth in this particular accomplish that design for which you have sent them. Let the Holy Spirit remove all distractions from our attention and that which is revelational bring unto your people, even to the awakening of such epiphanies that we ourselves may or will have to endure. Illuminate, enlighten. And thy will being done will be our greatest joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Saints, yesterday we had came to the presentation that is called The Wise and the Foolish Virgin. But even more, it picked up a prophetic history that we ourselves, each one, he or she, the actors in the great drama of life, plays his or her part. It brought us down through the historical account of that for which God has called his church. We saw also yesterday that in the parable of the wise and foolish virgins, there is a reality. And as we pick up on part two of this particular study, I pray that we may look into those things which is just and true. We're coming out of the chapter of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, They all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made 
Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are going out, or gone out. But the wise answered and said, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. We're going to look at this particular in its demonstrated form of or that which is applicable to today. We're going to see the efficacy of this particular. Yesterday we looked at the lamp. The lamp is the word of God. The oil and the vessels of these lamps were seen in the book of Zechariah chapter 4 as being conveyed from the olive tree on the right hand and on the left hand of the menorah. For those who are not peculiar with the concept of the menorah, it's the golden of the seven branch golden candlestick that lighted up the sanctuary. In Zechariah's vision, he was shown this in the midst of three other objects. Olive tree on the right, olive tree on the left, and there was a bowl on the top of it, which the olive trees, by a pipe, pulled out their oil into that vessel. And the menorah on the bottom is stood. Then the words of God came to Zechariah, thus giving a demonstrated factor of the atonement, that he or she who received that imputed righteousness, the same shall be imported with the same. For practice habits become character. And that which is habituated, that which is faculted, that which is poured into the full capacity of the receiver, the recipient, he or she demonstrate the same. For like grows with like, and by beholding, the mind assimilates to the change. We saw also the flagons to which the virgins was carrying the oil. The virgins waited for the bridal party. Thus, in Eastern times, the groom will go and get the bride and bring the bride back to his house. And as they travel on the journey, there was a bridal party who walked in its train. And the virgin, who had the lamps to trim, they was waiting for that expectation that when the bridal train shall come, they may join it. Thus a prefigure of the church, waiting for the atoning factor of the atonement, when Christ shall be united. Once again, this lone earth, this lone sheep, this lost corn, reconnect that the ladder that Jacob had saw that reached down from the heavenly court, the angels descended and ascended upon, and when the earth is made new, the reality will be seen as our king sits or will sit upon the throne of David. Thus connecting not only the divine nature of the divinity, but humanity. For Christ forever retains a body. He who is the Son of God has now in close proximity connected himself with the Son of Man. For God so loved the world that the race itself has received another counterpart, even the second Adam. In the parable of the wise and foolish virgin, we see also that the wise and the foolish virgin are two classes who are, who are waiting for their Lord. Once again, saints, it is two classes who are waiting for their Lord. This excludes hypocrisy. This excludes those who are habituating simple tendency. And as we pick up on this concept of the meaning of this particular, I pray that God will give us the insight that we may see ourselves in one of these categories. Chapter 25, verse 5. While the bridegroom carried, they all slumbered and slept. In the parable, all the ten virgins went out to meet the bridegroom. All had lamps and vessels for oil. For a time that seemed no different between them. So with the church that lived just before the second coming, all have a knowledge of the scripture. 
all have heard the message of Christ's near approach and confidently expect his appearing. But as in the parable, so it is now. A time of waiting intervenes. Faith is tried, and when the cry is heard, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Many are unready. Many are unready. They have no oil in their vessels with their lamps. They are destitute of the Holy Spirit. Reading here from Christ Object Lesson on page 408, paragraph 3. Without the Spirit of God, a knowledge of His Word is of no avail. The theory of truth, unoccupied by the Holy Spirit, cannot quicken the soul or sanctify the heart. One may be familiar with the commands and promises of the Bible, but unless the Spirit of God, the oil, sets the truth home, the character will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, man will not be able to distinguish truth from error, and they will fall under the masterful temptations of Satan. Here, saints, we see how the demonstrated factor of the Holy Spirit. The Bible records this statement, the Holy Spirit is within you. For the Bible testifies that he, the Spirit of truth, when he shall come, he who drifts within the mind, renewing the spirit, and once received, quicken the faculties. Without the Spirit of God, a knowledge of his word is only a theoretical truth or a philosophical idol. It is only the truth sanctified in the soul, habituated practice, that it becomes habituated into the recipient. Does he or she become it? And truly, the word of Christ is then, even after so many centuries, that man does not live by bread only, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. One may be familiar with the commands and promises of the Bible, but unless the spirit of truth set this truth home, there will be no demonstration. The class represented by the foolish version are not hypocrites. They have a regard for the truth. I'm going to say it again, saints. The class that is represented by the foolish virgins are not hypocrites. Remember the concept. They are called virgins because they have received Christ's imputed righteousness. They are called wise or foolish because either they discern the signs of the times they are living in and the potency of that particular to which they are given, or they lack dormancy, apathy, has taken its toll. But in this sense, they're still not being something they're not, for they are called virgins. So they are not hypocrites, as it reads here in Christ's Object Lesson, page 411, verse 1. They have a regard for the truth. They have a regard for the truth. They have advocated the truth. They are attracted to those who believe the truth, but they have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit working. Remember, saints, the theme was this, when they all awoken, one said to another, give us of your oil for our lamps is going out. So if the oil represents the Holy Spirit, the job of the Holy Spirit is to demonstrate the life of Christ in the soul, then the working of the Holy Spirit must be lacking. So obvious they have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit working. It says here, they have not fallen upon the rock. Christ Jesus, and permitted their old nature to be broken up. The Bible records this concept in these words. As Christ talked to Nicodemus in a private interview that night, he described something called the flesh, how it gives birth to flesh, and that which is called the spirit, how it gives birth to spirit. Then he said, marvel not that ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listens. Thou hearest the sound, but cannot tell from which it comes or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. In this particular, the wind itself is invisible, but it is seen by the object of its movements, of that which it moves. As it rattles through the leaves, the leaves moves. Additionally, it causes an effect. So it is with the Spirit. He or she who has felt the saving power of that grace can testify, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. 
For that which I once loved, I now hate. And that which I once claimed to, found it hard to surmount over, I now came to victory. And saints, fret not, for sanctification is a lifetime process. Even with the movement of the wind, so with the Holy Spirit, it is a long, protected process. But the author, who is authorized, is able to finish. So lose not your confidence. The foolish version. They have not fallen upon the rock, Christ Jesus, and permitted their old nature to be broken up. This class is also represented by the stony ground hearer. They received the word with readiness, but they fell of assimilating its principles. This influence is not biting. The spirit works upon man's heart according to his or her desires and consent, importing in him or her a new nature. But the class represented by the foolish virgins have not been content with a, what they have been content with a superficial work. They have not or do not know God. They have not studied his character. They have not held communion with him. Therefore, they do not know how to trust, how to look and live. Their service to God degenerates into a form. The Bible records this statement in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 33, verse 31. They come unto thee as the people, comments, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but with their hearts they go after their covetousness. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1, or well, verse 31. The Apostle Paul points out that this would be the special characteristic of those who live just before the second coming of our Lord Jesus the Christ. Paul says, in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Exodus from Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 5. As we think on this concept, Christ crucified takes the place of the sinner. The sinner justified stands in that particular righteousness that Christ has given. But the two still must become one. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold the bridegroom coming, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered and said, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Matthew chapter 25, verse 6 through 9. This is that class that in a time of peril are found crying, peace and safety. They lure their hearts into security and dream of not danger. When started from their lethargy, they discern their destitution and entreat others to supply their lack. But in spiritual things, no man can make up another deficiency. Read again, saints. But in spiritual things, no man can make up for another deficiency. The grace of God has been freely offered to every soul. The message of the gospel has been heralded. Let him that is a thirst come. Whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. But character, as we read here out of Christ's object lesson, page 411, paragraph 2. But character is not transferable. No man can believe for another. No man can receive the spirit for another. No man can impart to another the, char the character, which is the fruit of the spirit's working. The Bible records this statement. In Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 20, though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, the land, as I live, said the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter, but they shall but deliver their own souls by their righteousness. Saints, notice this concept. Noah, 
though he was perfect in a perverse generation, did not receive his perfection by any hereditary tendency. For that which is broken upon the rock, Christ Jesus, so it also was given unto Noah. Christ imputed righteousness, the love that God so loved with, pierced his heart. And Noah became assimilated, even when the world itself had dismissed the law in the olden times. Daniel. Daniel was tempted. He was tempted in a time of apostasy. Israel were in captivity. And he was in a high office. In our very day, he would be something like a chaplain that ministered to the governmental figures. But in his day, he was next in line to Nebuchadnezzar. He had all the right to fail God for all that glory of that Babylonian kingdom. For at that time, Babylonia ruled the world. But his character was as steadfast upon that rock that he was an exile in a foreign land. Job. The affliction that he suffered was a prefigure of all the affliction that Christian would have to go through to each his lot. Satan knows that all who want to live a godly life engage in the warfare to demonstrate to the world righteousness by faith. And as Job in his day was tempted by the adversary, so Satan noticed every Christian who has not yielded the knee to bail. And so, the warfare began. But Job, through all his discouragement, from friends, even loved ones, God still, in the end, brought him off more than conqueror. As God used these figures, it's the antitype of that for which each one of us in our life, such in these last days, will have to endure. Whether in a larger or lesser degree, those who are called, chosen, and faithful Love not their lives unto the death, for they overcame him, the adversary, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and if you boil down to it, they love not their life, even unto the death. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Say so this verse, verse six, has puzzled many people. And they ask the question. What do it mean at midnight there was a cry made? Behold, the bridegroom coming. This particular, the wise and foolish versions, was first seen in the summer of 1844 when the message was first given to the world. During the springtime, in the summertime of 1844, there was a, an awakening to the whole world that Christ was dear in the midst thereof, was about to come to the earth. At that time also, there was two additional messages preached. Babylon is fallen, Babylon is fallen, and behold, the bridegroom come and go you out to meet him. But the midnight that was seen in those days was to grow denser and denser as man reject the truth, thus having its shadow upon our day as it turned into an Egyptian black. Someone asked the question, have we arrived in that time? I want to read an exhortation to some fulfillments that have taken place in our time frame. And I'm reading from different testimonial testimonies that is given in the spirit of inspiration. The present, right now, it says, is a time of overwhelming interest to all living. Rulers and statesmen, men who occupy positions of trust and authority, thinking men and women of all classes, they have their attention fixed upon the events taking place all about us. They are watching the relation that exists among the nation. They observe the activity that is taking position of every earthly element. And they recognize that something great and decisive is about to take place. That the world is on a verge of a stupendous crisis. Once again, saying that the world is on a verge of a stupendous crisis. Prophets and Kings 537. The calamities by land and by sea. The unsettled, the unsettled state of society. The laws of war are partitious. They forecast approaching events of the greatest magnitude. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world 
And the final movements will be rapid ones. Testimony for the church, 9-11. Troublous times soon to come. The time of trouble, which is to increase until the end, is very near at hand. We have no time to lose. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. The prophecies of the 11th chapter of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. Review and Herald, November 24th, 1904. The time of trouble. Such trouble as was not since there was a nation, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, is right upon us. And we are like the sleeping virgin. We are to awaken and ask the Lord to place underneath us his everlasting arms and to carry us through the time of trial before us. Manuscript releases, volume 3. The world is becoming more and more lawless. Soon great trouble will arise among the nations, trouble that will not cease until Jesus comes. We are on the very verge of the time of trouble, and protectees of such scarcely dreamed of are right before us. We are standing on the threshold of the eternal ages. In quick succession, the judgment of God will follow one another. Fire, flood, earthquake, war, and bloodshed. There are stormy times before us. Let us not utter one word of unbelief and discouragement. The nations are in unrest. Jesus declared, There shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations. Matthew chapter 24, verse 29, 13, verse 24 through 26, Luke chapter 21, verse 25, Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 through 17. Strange and eventful history is being recorded in the books of heaven, events which is declared should shortly precede the great day of God. Everything in the world is in, is in an unrest state or unsettled state. The labor unions are quickly stirred to violence if their demands are not occupied with or accompanied with. Plainer and plainer, it is Becoming that the inhabitants of the world are not in harmony with God. No scientific theory can explain the filthy march of evil workers under the guardianship of Satan. In every mob, wicked angels are at work, arousing men to commit deeds of violence. The perversity and cruelty of men will reach such a height that God will reveal himself in his majesty. Very soon, the wickedness of the world will have reached its limit. And as in the days of Noah, God will pour out his judgment. The Upward Look, 3.34. Many will say, have we reached the darkness? The Bible records this statement in Isaiah chapter 60. The darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. Saints, we have almost reached the time. As the loud cry will go out, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And though we see the harvest, the agent of evil are consolidating and muscling up their forces. But there's another parable, there's another Bible verse here that gives us a warfare. For the dragon, it says, was wrought with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. This time, we have come. Reading from Christ's Object Lesson, 412, Paragraph 1. It is in a crisis that character is revealed. When an honest voice proclaimed at midnight, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And the sleeping virgins were rose from their slumbers. It was seen who had made preparation for the event. Both parties were taken unaware. But one who... But one was prepared for the emergency, and the other was found without preparation. So now, a sudden and unlooked-for calamity, something that would bring the soul face-to-face -face with death, will show whether there is any real faith in the promises of God. It will show whether the soul is sustained by grace. The great final test comes at the close of human probation, when it will be too late for the soul need to be supplied. The ten virgins are waiting in the ending of this earth history. All are to be called Christians. All are to have a call, a name, a lamp, 
and all profess to be doing God's service. All apparently wait for Christ's appearing. But five are unready, and five are found ready. Five will be surprised, dismayed, or dismayed outside the banquet hall. We are told, saints, that the coming of the bridegroom will be in the darkest hour of this earth's history. That the prophecies of the 11th chapter of Daniel has almost reached its fulfillment, and great changes which have come to our world, and those who witnessed it in the last few centuries have witnessed that the final movements are truly rapid ones. The coming of the bridegroom was at midnight, the darkest hour. So the coming of Christ would take place in the darkest period of this earth's history. The days of Noah and Lot featured the condition of the world just before the coming of the Son of God. The scriptures pointing forward to this time declared that Satan will work with all power and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 and verse 10. His, his working is plainly revealed by the rapidity, the rapidly increasing darkness, the multitude of error, heresies, and delusion of these last days. Not only is Satan leading the world captive, but his deception are leavening the professed churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. The great apostasy, it says here in Christ's object lesson, page 4, 14, paragraph 3, the great apostasy would develop into darkness, deep as midnight, deep as sackcloth of hair. To God's people, it would be a night of trial, a night of weeping, a night of persecution for the truth's sake. But out of that night of darkness, God light. Behold, said the scriptures, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 2. Thus two harvests will be produced in this time. Thus two people will show forth in this time. Those who receive the seal of God, assimilation, and those who receive the mark of that nation that God calls the beast. The question is still there. It says in Matthew chapter 25, verse 10. One will ask the question, if the church is a bridal party in this particular parable, waiting for the bridegroom and the bride, waiting to join the procession, then who is the marriage pertaining to? Or what do the marriage symbolize? One will ask the question, isn't the church the bride? I will say yes. But in this parable, the church are they that are invited to the wedding. There must be another calling put forth here. We pick them up here in verse 10 of the book of Matthew, chapter 25. And while they went to buy the foolish version, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, the wise versions, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Verse 11. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Verse 12, but he said and answered, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when it were in the Son of Man cometh. They that were ready, they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. At the final day, many will claim a mission to Christ's kingdom, saying, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. Thou hast taught in our streets. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and thy name have done many wonderful works? But I will answer, I tell you, I know ye not whence ye are. Depart from me. Luke chapter 13, verse 26. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Luke chapter 13, verse 27. In this life, they have not entered into fellowship with Christ, Therefore, they know not the language of heaven. They are strangers to its joy. What man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit that is within a man? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Status, a status of all words. Status of all words that ever fell on mortal ears, ears are those words of doom. 
I know you not. The fellowship of the Spirit, which you have plighted, could alone make you one with the joy stone at the marriage feast. In the scene, or in that scene, you cannot participate. In that scene, it is seen that only those who are assimilated, its light would fall on blinded eyes, its melody upon deaf ears, its love and joy could awake no court of gladness in the world benumbed heart. You are shut out from heaven by your own unfitness for its companionship. We cannot be ready, saints, to meet the Lord by awakening when the cry is heard, Behold the bridegroom, and then gathering up our empty lamps to have them replenished. We cannot keep Christ apart from our lives here and yet be fitted for his companionship in heaven. In the great day of final award, the dead are to be judged out of those things which are written in the books according to their works. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Then by virtue of the atoning blood of Christ, the sin of all who has truly repented will be blotted out from the books of heaven. Thus the sanctuary will be freed or cleansed from the record of sin. And the type, the great work of the atonement or the blotting out of sins were represented by the service on the day of atonement, by the cleansing of the earthly sanctuary which was accompanied by the removal by the virtue of the blood of the sin offering of the sins by which it had been polluted. So it is now with the great day of atonement. The going in of the door symbolized that for which those who are now receiving the benefits thereof of Christ in the second apartment, the bridegroom chariot, 1844. But the people were not yet ready to meet their Lord. There was still a work of preparation to be accomplished for them in those days. Light was to be given, directing their minds to the temple of God in heaven. For the thought was, the earth was the sanctuary. And as they should, by faith, follow their high priest in his ministration there, new duties would be revealed. Another message of warning and instruction was to be given to the church. And thus producing that for which God calls the spirit of inspiration or the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy. Say to prophet, who may abide in the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. They shall, or that they, may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 and verse 3. Those who are living upon the earth, when the intercession of Christ should cease in the sanctuary above, or to stand in the sight of a holy God without a mediator, their robes must be spotless, their character must be purified from sin by the blood of the sprinkling through the grace of God, and their own diligent effort, they must be conquerors in the battle with evil. While the investigative judgment is going forth in heaven, while the sins are of the penitent believer are being removed from the sanctuary, there should be a special work of purification, of putting away of sin among God's people upon the earth. This work is more clearly presented in the message of the Revelation chapter 14. And I think we get ready to do our closing here. We have seen many types. We have seen the work of God in these days. By our own experience, we can testify what it is to have righteousness by faith. And those saints who are now scribing for the mastery will be brought unto a safe haven. Paul has declared, that the mystery which is to be finished in the days of the seven angel is that gospel that shall take out a people. And once God's total number is made up, we can see that there will be two classes presented, one who received the grace of God and one who received it not. As the Bible goes further, we come to the concept of what is that 
particular that Christ calls his bride in this parable? And who would be the benefit of entering into that communion? We read here, saints, in Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, as we turn there, saints. We see here the same type, having its counterpart and the antitype. I'm reading from verse 1. I'm stopping at verse 10. Revelation 19, verse 1. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven, saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great harlot, or whore, who did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and has revenged or avenged the blood of his servant at her hand. And again, they said, Alleluia, and her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty others, and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God, that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear, God, fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of a mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arraigned, and fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true saints of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou doest not. For I am of thy fellow servants and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Concerning this concept, saint, we see that a wedding procession here is taking place, that a reception here is put forth, that a marriage and those who are invited to this particular is now prescribed. We see also, saints, that the blessings that comes to those who are invited to the wedding supper and the rejoicement of the king of kings in such a people. Again, saints, in this particular parable, it is true that the church is the bride of Christ. But in this particular parable, it goes a little deeper. It deals with bright and clean linen that is given unto the bride, which is the righteous acts of the saints. Thus bringing us to a society that Christ, that is now divorced from him, will gain. Not only is the people of God to be redeemed at one minute with their Lord, thus symbolized in a marriage feast or a marriage covenant, so is the society for which they dwell therein. So we see here, saints, the parable itself is not only bringing back the people of God, but the earth itself new and redeemed. It says here, saints, we look at the word marriage. Marriage is a contract, both civil and religious. Not just religious, both civil and and religion, by which the parties engage to live together in a mutual affection and fidelity till death shall separate them. The word marriage is also prefigured in the word covenant, which is a mutual consent or agreement of two or more persons. Additional things. We have the word, the two become one. The Bible tells us this. The great object of education is to restore the image of God in the soul. In the beginning, God created man in his own image. He endowed him with noble qualities. His mind was well balanced, and all of his powers of his being were in harmonious balance or harmony. But the fall and its effects have perverted these gifts. Sin has marred and well nigh almost destroyed the image of God in man. It was to restore this image that the plan of salvation was divine. And the sanctuary service went forth in the heaven. For the way of the Lord is in the sanctuary. And a light of probation was granted also to man to bring him back to the perfection in which he was first created. In the great object of life, the object that underlines every other, it is the work of parents and teachers 
in the education of the youth to cooperate with the divine purpose. And in so doing, they are laboring together with God. Additional things. Not only was it to be a society of people, but the earth itself was to be redeemed. For chapter 19, verse 8 of the Revelation says this, And to her, the bride, was granted that she should be arrayed in, arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteous act of the saints. The method of God in ancient times. From the earliest times, the faithful in Israel had given much attention to the matters of education. The Lord had directed that the children, even from babyhood, should be taught his goodness and his greatness, especially as revealed in the laws shown in the history of Israel. And with the spiritual Israel, it's the same. Raise a child in the way that he or she should go, and in society, in that society that he or she should make, that for which righteousness Versus that for which society has would not fail to do its duty. For when they get older, they shall not depart as the promise is given. The same lesson through songs and prayer and lessons from the scripture adopted to the opening mind, fathers and mothers were to instruct their children that the law of God is an expression of his character. And so it is now, saints. In the parable, when the bridegroom came, they that was ready went in with him to the marriage. The comment of the bridegroom here brought to view takes place before the marriage. The marriage represents, once again, saints, the marriage represents the acceptance or reception of Christ, of his kingdom, or reception by Christ of the kingdom, the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Reading here from the great controversy, the marriage represents the reception of Christ, of his kingdom, the holy city, the new Jerusalem which is the capital and representative of the kingdom. It is called the bride, the lamb's wife. Says the angel to John, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. He carried me away, as John chronicled this statement, he carried me away in the spirit, says the prophet, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Revelation chapter 21, verse 9 and verse 10. Clearly, it says here, then, the bride in this particular parable represents the holy city, and the virgin that go out to meet the bridegroom are a symbol of the church. In the Revelation, the people of God are said to be the guests at the marriage supper. Revelation chapter 19, verse 9. If guests, they cannot be, in this particular parable, represented as the bride. Christ as stated by the prophet Daniel, we receive from the ancient of days in heaven, dominion, glory, and a kingdom. He will receive the new Jerusalem, the capital of his kingdom, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Daniel chapter 7, verse 14, Revelation chapter 21, verse 2. Having received the redemption of his people, who is to sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at his table in his kingdom, when this is made up saints, then God himself have prepared a place for those also to partake of the marriage supper of the Lamb. The question still remains, if the kingdom itself is a new Jerusalem, is also a secondary sense of the bride, the Lamb's wife, how can we connect both symbolic trees? I will say it this way, saints. Once God's people have to come at one minute with Christ, the two becoming one. It symbolized a marriage covenant with the people on earth. Satan has usurped the earth and its dominion. But that which is shown in Daniel chapter 2, that which was cut out without hands, will not only smite the toes thereof of the great John image that Satan has created upon this earth, but will destroy the very image itself. And this same stone will grow into a bigger, larger kingdom, thus prefiguring the earth made new. In this particular sense, Christ has re-wedded the earth. And its dominion shall be given to the saints. And the righteous act of the saints will be the fine land to which the earth is covered from one end to the other. And the glory of the Lord shall be seen in his people. And the earth made new shall be reconnected with the other worlds. Thus the capital of the whole entire universe will be God, kingdom combined with man. And the center of the universe will be Christ seen upon not only the throne of David, 
for the eternal throne. Thus, elevate man who has triumphed are more valuable than the golden wedges of Ophir. They that was ready, saints, went in with him. And glorious was that reward. Glorious was that atonement when the full number of God's people and same demonstration of evil was ended. Glorious was the revelation that was given to God's people who was to be everlasting from one end of the earth to the other. And as we give you the close up here, saints, I want to read a statement that is written when this day shall take its toll. And we shall see as we are seen and know as we are known. For God's faithfulness Withstand the heaven. In this life, we can only begin to understand the wonderful theme of redemption. With all our finite comprehension, we may consider most honestly the shame and the glory, the life and the death, the justice and the mercy that met in the cross. Yet with the utmost stretch of our mental capacities, we fail to grasp its full significance, the length, the breadth, the depth, the height, of redeeming love are but dimly comprehended. The plan of redemption would not be fully understood, even when the ransom see as they are seen and know as they are known. But through the eternal ages, new truth will continually unfold to the awakening and wondering delighted mind. Though the grief and pains and temptation of earth are ended, and the cause removed, the people of God will ever have a distinct intelligent knowledge of what their salvation has caused. The cross of Christ will be the science and song of the redeemed through all eternity. In Christ glorified, they will behold Christ crucified. Never will it be forgotten that he whose power created and upheld the unnumbered world through the vast realms of space, the beloved of God, the majesty of heaven, he whom cherubs and seraphims delighted to adore humbled himself to uplift fallen man, that he bore the guilt and the shame of sin, the hiding of his father's face, to the woes of a lost world, broke his heart and crushed out his life on Calvary Cross. The maker of all worlds, the arbiter of all destiny, should lay aside his glory and humiliate himself from love to man who ever excite the wonders and adoration of the universe. And as the nation, of the redeemed look upon their Redeemer, and behold the eternal glory of the Father shining in his countenance, as they behold his throne, which is from everlasting to everlasting, and to know that his kingdom is to have no end. They break forth in rapturous song, Worthy, worthy is the Lamb that was slain, and has redeemed us by his own most precious blood. The mystery of the cross explains all other mysteries. And the light that springs from Calvary Cross, the attributes of God, which has filled us with fear and awe, appear beautiful and attractive. Mercy, tenderness, and parental love are seen to blend with holiness, justice, and power. While we behold the majesty of his throne, high and lifted up, we see his character and his gracious manifestations and comprehend as never before the significance of that enduring title. Our Father, O Holy Father, we want to thank you at this time. We want to thank you for your grace and your mercy and your love. We want to thank you for that particular anticipation to be with you, to see you, to be where you are. Grant our hearts to be receptive. Grant our love to be genuine. Grant our faith to be pure as the virgin that is seen in the parable that are ready. Take the desire of your people, for we understand you can fail not, and those who receive the atonement will receive. We want to thank you, Father, for doing so much unto us, even showing us the historic account of where we are in history, that we can take our stand. Grant us repentance. Grant us a heart to love you. And as we pray for others, the family, the workplace, the neighborhood, we pray also that you may be in company with us. Let your Holy Spirit so influence the people that they may see righteousness by faith, that they may see that which is righteousness, that they may see the alternative to the world and that which the world has to give. We want to thank you, Father, for the parable of the wise and the foolish virgins, and to whom it may pertain, those that was ready would in with you, and numbers was made up. 
and Christ received the kingdom for them. For in such he is going to prepare those mansions. But first, the preparation starts now. It starts within. Fail not thy people, and indeed, we shall trust. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And thank you so much, um, Brother James, for that message, for bringing part two to us. And if you have it on hand, um, what page in Christ Object Lessons again? Um, the quote that you read, the one um, on the character. Excuse me. <clears throat> Amen. You have it on hand, sister. I read from Christ Object Lesson for those who have the book. It will be labeled under the wise and foolish version or behold the bridegroom comments. And for those who do not have the book, you will find that in Christ Object Lesson on page, it's on page, page 413, paragraph 1. We can also find it on page 412, paragraph 3. Okay, thank you so much. And um, if you could um, please share with our callers your um, contact information and um, if you're going to be traveling anywhere, where you're going to be. And um, for those that want to come hear you in person and any projects that you might be working on. Amen. Amen. Yes, Saint. You will find us at the Lord Will Ministry, which is located in Washington, Kettle Falls, Washington, Washington State. You can also contact us by email at the Lord's Will Seven at Gmail dot com. That's T H E L O R D W I L L S seven at Gmail dot com. Also, if you want to attend our presentations, we often have presentations as we travel around. We just finished up a prayer study or a prayer meeting, a camp meeting in Chewila, Washington. And you will find our location of different meetings on our website, which is also uh, connected with Facebook. Additional things, we have four TV channels, one on Roku, ROKU, Apple TV, Android TV, and Amazon Fire TV, or Amazon Prime. You will find us under the name, The Lord's Will Ministry. They can get programs uh, that we have done in the past and others have done also. And for those that want to personally contact us, 323-335-0550 will be the number. Okay. Thank you so much. And for those that want to hear this message again or share it with a friend or a loved one, you can do so by 712-775-7089, PIN code, 555, 145 pound, and this call will be available until our next call tomorrow evening, and our speaker will be Pastor Martin. And all requests for CDs should be sent to the Voice of One Crying in the Wilderness, P.O. Box 8441, and Laverne, and that's L A V E R N E, California. 91750-8441 with a $5 donation for each CD to cover um, the cost of shipping and materials. And make your checks and money orders payable to Vaughn Williams. And uh, before I go um, into, you know, the rest of our closing, um, I want to make an announcement. It, it has come to our attention that one of our, um, you know, speakers, their ministry, uh, is in a very serious financial situation. Uh, they're in um, jeopardy of losing uh, the building that they're in. And they have, they had till the, tw till the end of the month, and now it's been moved to the 26th. So uh, because of how the information came to us, um, we're not giving out the name of the ministry. But if God is impressing your heart to give a donation, you can call Sister Jackie 
at 773-415-1562. And Sister Jackie will there inform you of, you know, how to uh, get in contact with this ministry. Okay. And we want to uh, thank all of our callers that unite with us on a daily basis, praying for this ministry and all the ministries connected with it. And we want to thank all of our callers who united with us on a regular basis to financially support the ministries. And for all of those wanting prayer requests, you can email us at avoc2019 at gmail.com. You can put your request on our Facebook page, or you may text or call Sister Jackie at 773-415-1562. Again, that's 773-415-1562. And by God's grace, you can now hear us on at servingwithamission.com internet radio amid discord and strife a voice was heard from the wilderness a voice startling and stern yet full of hope repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand desire of ages page 104 good night everyone god bless And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone 
tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, and we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless, 
And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening. God bless. And we look forward to fellowshipping with everyone tomorrow evening.